So welcome, everybody. Welcome to a new human experience podcast. Today is July 1st, 2021. And the, um, the topic for this evening is called willful silence. So, <clears throat> so starting in July, actually, the, 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 I have it that what I want to explore are some tools that um, you can all use to empower yourself and also to grow your consciousness. Of course, that's, that's really something that I am passionate about is to grow our own um, consciousness and to assist other people to do that. So that's why starting in July, um, I don't know how, how many weeks this is going to go and depending on what I can come up with. But um, at the very least, um, it's July and maybe it will go over to August as well. So first, the first one, the first tool that I would like to share with you is, for me, I consider that one of the most foundation and important tool. And that really is silence. Now, <clears throat> I know some people um, would call that meditation, but I actually want to to specify that it is not um, meditation in general, but it's a very specific kind of meditation, which is silent meditation that I want to stress. I There are so many different meditation, guided meditation, you can actually, um, movement can be a meditation as well. Dancing is like a, a sort of, um, just walking, that can be a meditation as well. So there are so many different kinds of meditation. For the purpose of growing your consciousness, though, I find that silent meditation is really the best tool, the most effective tool. So why would I say that? Um, I, would, I would give my reasons. It's because of the nature of our mind. The more I um, understand what the nature of our mind is, the more I become aware that, you know, silent meditation is really the way to go, even though I don't, I, uh, uh, silent meditation is not something that I started out with. Um, I think I started out with just guided meditation. Um, and I really love, you know, um, listening to Franco's meditation to, to um, different different people's meditation. So that's what I, I started with. And as, as I deepen my own, um, as my own journey goes forward though, I start to appreciate the, the value of silence. Um, and so the nature of our mind is that we, we perceive um, information. So, uh, and um, we don't just perceive any kind of uh, information. We perceive information that in our mind we deemed um, important or of interest. So what do I mean by that? Let's say if I'm hungry, so then what's important to me is, you know, how do I find some food? So that's what I mean by that's that's how our mind works is that whatever it is that we deem is important or of interest to us, then we would pull those information in. And the thing is, um, it will always pull in the very similar information because our on one hand, we like variety, but on the other hand, our mind does not like change. We, we as a species right now is um, at the, the we, we are trained to not like change. We like rituals. We like um, doing things over and over again. We like habits. So we are a habit forming kind of um mindset right now. So at this moment, we don't like change. The, the mind, um, like our unconscious mind especially, 
do not like change. We like variety, though, which means, for example, um, if we like to eat, um, let's say we like to eat salad. So then we would like to, um, let's say today I'm going to eat a, a, um, a uh, coleslaw salad. And then tomorrow I might want to eat a um, carrot salad. And, to, and then the next day I would want to eat some other salad. So that's what I mean by we like variety. But we don't like to, we don't like change. So um, if you are used to a certain routine in food, then if all of a sudden, let's say if I am Chinese and I have been eating Chinese food for all my life, all of a sudden, if I go to a place that have no Chinese, I don't like eating. I, I, don't, I, I wouldn't enjoy what I'm eat, eating, even though the food themselves may taste fine, but I don't, I'm not um, used to the way the, the, the new type of food is being cooked or the way it is being seasoned, presented, or the environment. So these are the little things that trips up our mind. So our mind actually do not like change. And because of this nature, once we have settled in into a pattern of thinking, it is not easy for us to change that pattern of thinking. We usually only would change that pattern of thinking um, only after we have exhausted all attempts to resolve a situation. It's like we, we only would change if we have no choice, then we would we would just, you know, well, we, there's, there's no other alternative, so we have to change. Let's say all of a sudden I, I move to a small town that, that absolutely has no Chinese food, no Chinese ingredients, then, then I would be forced to stop eating Chinese food. For example, that would be like, like that's what our, our um, brain pattern is like. It serves as a way to keep us into a, um, a box. So that is why that the, the nature of a mind in such a way, and that's why silent meditation is um, effective because silent meditation, silence is actually, it's a, it breaks our pattern of thought. It is the, the, most effective way to allow us to let go of our habitual way of thinking is actually just to stop thinking. And when we stop thinking, then um, is, is that um, when we stop thinking, it allows the um, it, it, it does not happen right at once when we stop thinking. It doesn't happen right at once. We have to stop thinking. We have to break the pattern of how our mind works for a period of time. And when we start to do that, then um, what it does is it breaks the pattern of our habitual way of thinking. And this pattern interrupt will allow the underlying pattern to come to the surface. So what do I mean by this? So our habitual pattern is, is something that we learned and, and or we have been conditioned um, and shaped by our parents, by um, our siblings, by close members of our family, close friends, by um, our, the emotions that we, we um, we go to a lot and also by the society that we're in and and it's all shaped by that so when we were young and and we as a an infinite soul would take on this this tiny body as a, a baby and then all the people around us seem to um, have everything figured out. So we become this sponge that really soaked in all the thought patterns, 
all the the beliefs and and a lot of the 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 values of the people around us. So by the time we get to, let's say, fifteen twenty years old, um, there we already have a a pattern of thinking that is very far from who we truly are when we first came on this planet. So when we use silence to break that. Our habitual pattern of the, the the pattern that is that we have learned while we come,、um, why will we you know by our environment? When we break when we break that pattern, then the underlying pattern, which is our natural innate pattern of our true self, that pattern will start to be able to come up, and. For this period of time, for for the 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 time that we are going into, when we are shifting from third dimension to the fifth dimension, then this this type of、um, break the pattern breaker of of it will be very useful because. All of our habitual thinking, all of our limitations, all of our、um, conditioned、um, identity of of who our ego think we are,、um, really is in the way of us trying to now readjust to a new dimension. So when we When we do this, when we use silence to break our habitual pattern long enough, it will start to allow our natural innate pattern to come up again, and that's what we really want. And that's、um, that's why this I really want to stress using silent meditation to to get at to allow the 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 true self to come up. Now I'm not suggesting that tr- the true self cannot come up、um, if we don't if we don't do the the silent meditation. Of course, our true self will do its best to come up whenever we、um, it will try to come up. It's just that most of the time the the voice of the true self is.、Um, It's much more subtle, and if our mind is so busy and engaged with all the 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 hustle and bustle of life, it is so easy for us to miss those those、um, occasional flare that our true self is trying to come up, and usually the true self would. Come up when we get to the part where we、um, like we are cornered and there's no no other way out. Then the true self, like when we're in breakdown mode, and when we are in、uh, finally, well, I, I give up because what I'm doing is not working. So when we surrender, and that's when the true self can have a an opportunity to come up, but. It really is.、Um, we don't have to wait until we get to that point that we are out of option, As, especially、um, with all the things that's going on. It's actually we really need to give our true self an opportunity to shine through, to 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 take this,、um, to shorten this process is to. Really, go and use this tool of silent meditation in order to take a break from our normal pattern and allow the natural, innate, true self to come up. So, what do I mean, and how do we do this? How do we actually do a silent meditation? It's actually quite simple.、Um, all we need to do is actually just set aside some time. And have a quiet place, and find a quiet place. 
So time and a quiet place, and that's that really is all we need. So how much time though? So do I need you know do I need an hour or you know fifteen minutes? So how much time? And the the idea of how much time is really it it depends. Um, it really depends on how disciplined you you are, your mind is. If you are a very disciplined person, then you may be able to um, stay in silence for a longer period of time. But for for most beginners, though, I would suggest just starting with about five minutes. Just allow yourself five minutes because.、Um, Like five minutes may not sound like a very long time. How how can we actually get any benefit from five minutes? I mean, if you you go outside and and um and and bathe in the sun for five minutes, you're not going to get much of a tan. Um, most likely. However, um, it's for for an un. Disciplined mind for an untrained mind. Even trying to be silent for five minutes, it seems like eternity. So I would suggest to really just start with five minutes. And and if you <clears throat> you if you find that five minutes is is even a challenge, then just do two minutes. The idea is to start, is to just start with. Two minutes, and then just、um, lengthen that time gradually. And and usually, it、um, when you start to be able to persist in silent meditation for about fifteen to twenty minutes, when you get to that that duration of time, that's when you really start to、um, get the most benefit from it. However, when you start, though, you have to start.、Um, start at the very beginning. Just go with five minutes or less. If you if five minutes is not easy, so just go with.、Um, just start with two minutes, and then just do two minutes for for let's say、um, a couple of days and or maybe even a week, and then when you find that. You do this short period of time, and you're starting to get more comfortable, and it's a little bit easier. Once when you get, the, when you find that it becomes easier, then you lengthen it. So if you start by two minutes, you may want to, after a week or so, lengthen it to five minutes, and then after、um, another week or two, then you lengthen it to let's say ten minutes and see if. You're okay with ten minutes, and you scale back if t- all of a sudden because you, like from five minutes to ten minutes is really a hundred percent increase. So your your mind may、um, may give you some、um, difficulties, may be hard to do that. So just just play it by ear. So the idea is to start, no matter how short the time period it is. It is. And then start to grow that length of time gradually until you get to at least about fifteen to twenty minutes. Then you can you can、um, stay there for a little while, and and until you you start to get、um, more of the benefits, then you can either lengthen it, or you may want to、um, have. More than one meditation, one twenty-minute meditation a day. You may want to have a twenty-minute in the morning and then twenty-minute in the evening, and to break that up. Or you may, if if it's more convenient, then you may want to have, you know, just a a, a longer period of time, just one time a day. So that's really.、Um, The the mechanics of it.、Uh, um, in addition to to silent to to silent is、um, just find a relatively quiet place, quiet and private space as well. 
the idea is to be in a place that is um, that you have some control over the external stimulus that you would get. So, um, which means that if it is a bright sunny day and, and the only time that you can um, meditate is during the daytime, you may want to wear an eye mask. And if um, where you are is always, um, always noisy, then you may want to put on some earplugs. Um, if you can't really find a place that has, that is quiet enough for you to be able to do a silent meditation without too much distraction. So those are things that you can, um, you can kind of um, moderate and adjust to some extent. And, and find a, a space that does not have a lot of people, you know, um, walking around that may be trying to engage you in conversation or, may, or, or maybe your kids would want to talk to you if they see you sitting there. So then try to find a place where it's more private and you don't have a lot of people walking around and, and um, trying to distract you. So that those are really um, do the best you can. And sometimes you can't. So you just have to um, use eye mask or um, put on earplugs and also make sure you tell um, your, your roommate or family or, or other people that you live with to not disturb you for a, a, period, a short period of time. So, so when you can find that, that quiet place, then all you have to do is just connect to your heart and then be still and silent for five minutes or however long it is that you can maintain the stillness and posture. And that really is it. It's um, the 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 mechanics of it is very simple. The um, however the there are a lot of um, tips that I would like to to give you. Um, let's see. <clears throat> okay, so some of the tips that I can give you is that um, make sure you go to the bathroom beforehand and wear comfortable clothes, as comfortable as possible. So why? Because um, as I mentioned, you're, you don't like change. Your mind don't like change. So when you're trying to do something that is different, when you're trying to make a change, your mind will start to distract you. And one of the ways it can distract you is um, by your body. So your body may all of a sudden need to go to the bathroom um, or you may all of a sudden feel these aches and pains in your body that you don't normally get. But, you know, somehow when you sit there, you start to get, you start to um, be aware of pain in your body. Um, it may be sometime, it may be a, just, just random and sudden pain, or maybe sometimes that you, because you're sitting still, you, uh, like any kind of um, underlying pain in your body, you become more aware of them. So these will, that's how the body would um, start to bring these things to attention in order to sabotage you, in order to distract you. And so anything like a very restrictive or uncomfortable piece of clothing, it may be nothing when you are busy doing other things. But when you are actually sitting down to do a meditation, a silent meditation, then those things will start to come up and start to distract you. So that's why one of the tips um, is to you know go to the bathroom, wear comfortable clothes so that 
um, you kind of um, take away all these these ammunition that your body and your mind will start to throw out at you because you are trying to change it. So that's that's one of the 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 defense mechanism of your brain. Now I'm not saying that these will always happen. I'm just saying that you know these. In my experience, yeah, it it um, they do come up, and um, so that's that's why they are. Um, that's, that's why I'm telling you ahead of time that <clears throat> just be proactive. Just those are things that you can be proactive about. Um, another thing to be proactive about or to watch out for is. Um, you, your mind will start to talk you out of this meditation or talk you out of any meditation at all. Um, I've noticed that myself is that um, there would be this internal dialogue that will go something like this. Oh, I've been doing this meditation for like two whole weeks or maybe like two whole months. How come I don't feel any difference? Um, am I doing something wrong? It must not work for me. Um, you know, I, I must be hopeless. Like all of these conversation, these are just internal dialogue that is trying to dissuade you. We're trying to persuade you to stop doing this because, you know, you are somehow beyond repair. There's nothing you can, there's no, um, nothing can help you in all this, you know, silent meditation is a waste of time. So just, just, just to, to, to watch out for these kind of conversation. Um, it's, <laughs> it's actually just your current mind pattern trying to um, um, persuade you to not continue this because your, your mind knows that you are trying to change it. So then um, be aware that these are some of the, the internal dialogue and, and doubts that will come up or may come up. So don't listen to it. So choose, if you choose to do the silent meditation, then make sure that, um, like understand that this is a, a practice. This is a long-term commitment. It's not something that you do for two weeks or two months. It's, it's not a new diet. It's a way of life. And it's also a way of um, getting access to your true self. So don't listen to your, um, your, your mind trying to talk you out of it. And the next thing I want to um, bring up is that, you know, at first when you do this silent meditation, you may still have a lot of thoughts going through your your mind. Go like, like yeah, even though you are not listening to a guided meditation, you're not talking yourself into meditation, but there will still be a lot of thoughts trying to intrude in your mind, you will still have a lot of these, um, these things go, um, going around in your head. So that's, that's part of, that's part of it. That's, that's part of your, your current mind pattern. Your current mind pattern is you have a lot of thoughts. You may not be aware of all the thoughts that goes through your mind, but yeah, you do have a lot of thoughts that goes through your mind. Um, and when you do this silent meditation, you would be um, all of a sudden be present to all these thoughts that's going through your mind. So just know that 
in the beginning or um it yeah that's that's what's going to happen is that during your silent meditation you don't feel very silent because there's so many thoughts that's just just kicking around in your head so um you may still have a lot of thoughts but the idea of the silent meditation is to observe the thoughts that come into your mind without giving it any energy without um, chasing after those thoughts so what do i mean by um, not chasing it is like for example i gave the example that um, like if you're hungry all of a sudden when you when you meditate you start to feel hungry um, and that actually happens to me quite a bit because I usually, <laughs> when I when I meditate, I, I I I don't have a lot of food beforehand, so sometimes I would get really hungry, and that's just part of the body trying to um, sabotage the meditation. So when I start to feel hungry, um, if I if I try to think of, hmm, what do I have in the fridge that I can eat right after? Um, maybe I should have pancakes today, or maybe, oh my gosh, I would really love to have some porridge. Like, like if you, so that's what I mean by chasing the thoughts is when one thought comes into your mind, you start to, you know, go after it and then just expand on it even more. So that's what to not do when you are doing silent meditation is to when when thoughts come into your mind just observe your thoughts and don't chase after it don't give it any energy and also um, it's possible that you may have emotions coming up especially if you um, have started to do this this kind of silent meditation for a while, um, emotions may start to come up from nowhere. Uh, or you may have some thoughts that comes into your mind that triggers you. Or maybe you, like, let's say, remember it, like you have this um, conversation with your family the night before that is like there are some unresolved emotions and when you are in silent meditation those thoughts comes into your mind again and you picked up on those emotions again and you get triggered so when you get triggered or when all of a sudden emotions just come up you just feel them then just allow the emotions to come up without trying to suppress it without trying to um chase after it is to simply just observe the emotion, allow it to come up, allow it to be fully expressed, really to, to process it, to, to allow it to come, come to the surface and resolve by itself. And it, the emotions will resolve by itself if you don't chase after the thoughts. Like it, yeah, so that's really um, what may happen to all of these things. And also um, other things that is helpful is when you are silent, um, you may fall asleep. So, and um, sometimes, or maybe even at first, that may be, that may happen a lot. So one of the ways that I find that that makes it um, easier for me to stay present is to be present with my body, meaning that um, is to set the intention to really focus on the experience in my body. So be present with my body be present with energy that is coming up in my body. So when I become um, present with my body, I find that there is this 
sensation that is what I really called alert stillness is that because I am paying attention to my body, but I'm not um, paying attention to thoughts. So when I really focus on the experience of my body, that actually is, is the easiest way for me to sustain this state of alert stillness. So when, when you are alert, but still, in stillness, then it's not as easy for you to fall asleep. So that is the way that I find is best for me to um, be in silent meditation without falling asleep, without, you know, um, giving into that, that tendency to fall asleep. And then also just to to let you know that there will be days when it's harder to be still. There will be days that is impossible. And usually when the, when, um, when the energies are high, because nowadays there's a lot of high energies hitting us. So when the um, Schumann resonance is, you know, hitting some record highs, then those usually would be the days that when it is harder to be still. So when I find myself in, in one of those um, days, then what I do is I use the, the five count in and five count out breathing technique to calm my mind down on these challenging days. So it's, it's just breathe in and count to five and then breathe out and count to five as well. So, so do about 25 of these and you will start to really be able to calm your mind down. And then you can um, go on to do the silent meditation. So those are really all the, the tips that I can think of for now. So just to summarize is that... Um, Silent meditation is really a long-term commitment and, and that um, usually when you get to about 20 minutes, if you can really stay in the silent meditation mode for about 20 minutes, that is when you start to notice um, shifts. At some point, you will notice your mind slowing down. And, and also at some point, you would also notice new thought patterns will start to appear. All of a sudden, um, solutions to some really long time issues would all of a sudden come up. So these would be new thought patterns that like you would start to you will start to notice these things coming up. And also you will get a a connection with a part of you that is you will start to feel this this connection with a part of you that is benevolent, wise, and really has your best interests in heart. And you will start to notice this this voice instead of your perpetual um, you know chaotic mind you will start to notice this other mind starting to or this other voice that's starting to become more and more um, noticeable and you will find um, this this other new voice will have a really gentle and wise quality to it. And it will, and then this is really what you're looking for because that really is your innate brilliance is that's really is your, um, your higher self coming through to you to be your guide, because that's what your higher self here is to do is to guide you and most of the time, 
it's not easy for us to hear this this um, more gentle and wise voice because our mind is so chaotic. But when we persist and really do this and um, take on this practice and commitment of silent meditation, this voice will become stronger and you would be able to hear it better. And so when you start to notice that, then, then you know that um, it's working. And I can't really, I can't really tell you how long it's going to take. Um, it may take you weeks or it may take you months. Um, however long it takes you, though, I definitely can attest to the fact that it will be, it is the best thing that you can do for yourself. Um, I mean, yes, there will be people like Franco around or other um, really wise and, and gentle guides and teacher around to, to assist us. However, those people cannot be with us all the time. The, the best way to really advance yourself, advance your own consciousness, is to actually tap into this wellness um, benevolent, benevolent, wise um, brilliance that is within you all along. It is just, it has just been covered up and ignored and not acknowledged. But actually, this is within each and every one of us. Um, and the more you commit to connecting with this part of yourself, the, um, the easier it is your journey is going to become because you don't have to call um, on someone else to get the advice. You can simply just take five minutes or even 15 minutes to just tune in and get that guidance from yourself who, who knows you best, who has your your back, who has your highest interests at heart. So that is really the, the treasure that is, mm, that is the, the, that will be at the, the end of putting in all this investment, this commitment of doing the silent meditation. And, and when you get access to this part of you, then um, no one, nothing can knock you off your game for long anymore. It's, it's like you become this, this immovable rock and you will start to grow. And this is something that you can take with you for forever from now on, because um, as we move into the, the fifth dimension, we will um, the third dimension, um, we don't, like, we forget. Every time we come on earth again, we forget everything that we have learned and we have to remember it again. But in the fifth dimension, we never forget again. We would keep our memory to the next time. So once you have developed this connection, it will always be with you forever from now on. So... So that's why it is, um, it is time consuming. However, it is something that you, you invest in it and it's going to be there for you for the rest of eternity. And that is really worth um, investing your time into. And that's all I have to share for today.